Namaste. Namaste and welcome everyone of the Blessed Jyotish community. It's such an honor and pleasure to be here with my dear friend and one of my greatest teachers, Dr. Arjun Pai. Welcome, sir. Namaste. Thank you very much, Snati, for having me here. This is uh, my pleasure as well to be with you, my friend. We are both here to discuss a very exciting event, the 2022 Maharishi Parashara Conference, which will be held virtually with an intention for it to be held in person next year. So first, I would like to share some details about how to access information about the conference, and then Dr. Pai will be previewing his lectures. So if you go online right now, um, the main page is parasharaconference.com, P-R-P-A-R-A-S-H-A-R-A, conference.com. And you can see all the fantastic teachers that are there. Uh, Sam Jeppy, Camilla Sutton, Dr. Foss, Jeffrey Armstrong, Visti Larson, Benita Lenker, Dr. Pai, Sarbani Roth, PVR, Eve Mendoza, Alan Anand, Dr. Harness, Malini Ayer, Pandit Sama Vidulaji, Aditya Togi, and Holy Santit, Melody Essig, Barry Rosen, and Charlotte Benson. And we're also going to have two live Kirtan concerts, one done by Durga Das, who's a professional, who's a traveling Kirtan Walla, and another electronic based Kirtan concert done by Kali Das. On the website, you can find the schedule for each day. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And then you can find the description of each of the classes on the following tab. If you wish to buy tickets right now, it's early bird pricing until September 1st. You can either buy the full pack conference package, which will get you a registration for every single lecture, as well as a recording of the lecture after the conference, or you can choose a single day package depending on the schedule. And you will also receive registration for all lectures that day, as well as recordings after the conference. Um, after September 1st, ticket prices will go up a little bit, but you'll be able to purchase individual lectures as well. Um, and then the last thing I wanna share is a little bit about our faculty. We have biography here, Dr. Arjun Pai, and we have uh, a, a, a bunch of beautiful people joining our faculty this year. So thank you for allowing me to share a little bit about this year's Parashara Conference. And if you wanna get that early bird ticket before September 1st, it's a great opportunity. But without further ado, I'm very, very, very excited to hear Dr. Arjun Pai discuss both of his lectures for the conference. Um, he's going to be discussing um, the research on nakshatra quality, yoni, and sexual compatibility. Do you want to tell us a little about that, sir? Yeah. Uh, firstly, thanks, Shanati, for you know having this conference. I know it takes a lot to put together a conference with a panel of uh, lectures and this was something that I also was looking forward to have a conference like this. Why? It's because this is one time of the year that we usually get together and we sit down, we discuss you know, different topics. There's so many different presentations. And so these conferences, I always look forward to when Dr. Harness used to uh, host them at uh, Sedona. So, this, so you are taking uh, the torch ahead. So I'm very, very, you know, um, appreciative of the effort that you're doing. And I would like to invite all your viewers, my viewers, and everybody out there to please um, register yourself for the conference and avail the early bird pricing that is there. This pricing will be uh, will be available only till the first of September. Okay. So let's go to what I I would be presenting. I have uh, two lessons that I will be presenting. Uh, the first class or uh, lecture would be on uh, the Friday, the 18th of November, and that's between uh, 7 to 9.30 p.m. EST, so that you have that on the website. Please go and visit the website. 
So the first uh, lecture is on research on nakshatra quality and uni and sexual compatibility. Now, uh, what made me choose this topic is I've always been fascinated with understanding personality types and that got me into the nakshatra studies. Um, each individual we know that is born with a certain personality with certain characteristics and certain traits. There is a, a system which was introduced, uh, I would rather call it a framework, which is called as Mayers and Briggs framework to classify people into 16 personality types. Now, this was probably based on the initial work of psychologist Carl Jung, who also talks about archetypes. Okay, Carl Jung came, came up with archetypes. Now, when I started studying nakshatras, I could link to the similar sort of concepts we are talking about, nakshatra devatas, and they are kind of archetype. The archetypical energy is very strong with these nakshatras. Now, do you want to add something, Sunadi? I mean, I'm just so excited. The, I love the hybridization of comparing these ancient models with modern models. It's so exciting. Exactly. That's, that's exactly what I would, what I would be doing. Now, when you look at the Mayers and Briggs model, there is a categorization. The key dimensions that are looked are introversion and extroversion, sensing and being intuitive, thinking and feeling, and then judging and perceiving. Now, there is a model that has been presented in Prashnamarga, which describes the Kuta matching system, which is very, very, uh, very, very popular in India for marriage compatibility and matching. Now, during this study of my um, study of Prashnamarga, I largely found that marriage counseling and compatibility was done on the basis of nakshatra, varnas, then the gender then looking at the elements, which are the bhutas, then the gunas, which means the quality, then looking at the gotras, vargas, vihagas, vedas, raju, and nadi. Then in Narada Purana, there is a description of the nakshatra and the nakshatra classification based on the animal totems, what we call them as the yoni. Now this, lecture that I will be doing is wanting to come up with a proposed nakshatra-based framework to understand the personality types of individuals. This is not only going to cover about sexual compatibility, but once you understand the nakshatra animals and their traits and some of the common patterns that we will be seeing with these, you will be able to extend the same framework to all kinds of relationships in general, like friendship, your familial relationships within your family, your business partnership, and you can extend that. Now, this whole concept, what I'm going to speak about is this lesson or this lecture will make you learn that we are looking at two things. One is your emotional intelligence that is there within the animals. Now, and then as animals, if you see how we have evolved, there is also a kind of a social intelligence which is there. So when we talk about emotional intelligence or emotional quotient, as we say EQ, and your social quotient, which is IQ, uh, SQ, is more important today than what was perceived in the past as your intelligent quotients, which is your IQ. Because how, because we are all social beings, how we integrate ourselves and how we create more social awareness and how relationship management happens. First is self-awareness. Then it is self-management. Then it is creating your social awareness and then how you manage those social interactions. So this is what I'm trying to discuss and I'm linking it with the nakshatra animal types and how you will use this to improve your compatibility and relationship in general, not only with your partners, but also in general with everybody that you interact with. So that is shortly about what I would be discussing in this lesson. Thank you, Dr. Pai. That's extremely exciting. And I'm gonna make sure that my wife 
joins me for that lecture. Um, I would also love to hear you discuss your exploration of Nakshatra Pada and Karma's, your, your Saturday afternoon lecture. Yeah. So that is on uh, 19th of November. Uh, it's between 2 to 4.30 p.m. EST. I would also want to remind uh, all people who will be joining the conference, they would also be able to avail the recording, which is HD quality recording, just in the case that you will not be able to participate live because we have to go with the schedule and some people might not be able to join because we are joining from different parts of the world. But I still encourage because Shanati would be sharing all the HD quality recordings uh, after a couple of weeks after the conference with every right. uh, Yeah, so that's something that I wanted to point out. Now, what I'm going to do in that thing where I'm going to talk about the nakshatras and the padas. Now, this is something which is very fascinating that I have worked with my team as well. Uh, where is this concept of nakshatra padas coming from? And some of the scholars believe, oh, there is no nakshatra padas that has been mentioned in any of the classics. So we call it charanapati or charana or Padas. Now, in my study and my quest to understand Nakshatra Padas, I found that this system probably came through the earlier stages of Pulatsya Rishi. Pulatsya was a mind born son of Brahma, and he came up with a system to divide the Nakshatras into four parts. The question is why, why was it not in three parts? Why not in five parts? Why would you divide the nakshatras into four parts? All right. So there are karmas attached with each of these pockets. Because if you understand what Pulatsya has given and the same work was later on extended in Tamil classics and also the earlier work which has been attributed to Ravana. The Ravana, the titanic king of Lanka, he came up with a, his uh, book or work which is attributed to him called as Ravana Samhita. Because Ravana is the grandson of Pulatsya Rishi. And this system is not only about saying you classify them into Dharma, Atta, Kama, Moksha. That is the, the simplified version of it. But if you also add, there are many layers that you can really, it's like a an onion. If you remove a peel of onion, there is many peels that are there. Now, when you look at the normal classification, you have to know that there is karmas attached with each of these nakshatra padas. See, for example, the first pada is, we say it is fire and it's dharma. But what we do not know is, it is also the desire of the body the body's desire, what it must do, or what it has to do. It's like the questions you ask is what I must do and what I have to do. The second pada is we say it's artha, okay, and earth element. What I have and what I need is the question that the mind is asking. It's manasika. The third is called what you want, but you have to express what you want. That's why when you do your prayers to God, you say, God, give me this, give me that. Doesn't God know what you need? But why do you have to ask for it? That is because it is of, it is kind of hypnotic self-affirmations that you're giving to yourself. That is the karma part of the third. The karma is the passion, but I want this, you're asking. Or what I like, what I enjoy. You're asking, oh, give me this because I will enjoy doing this. So that's the karma pada. And the last is what I need to let go of, what I need to release. Mm -hmm. And so there are so many layers that come from this study and this exploration. So I will be discussing in very much depth. And from that, you will be able to see why certain karmas are unfolding in a particular manner for you, which you have no control over. So there is something called as a free will. And there is also something called as destiny. So what is the Nakshatra Pada's teaching us? Where we have free will and where we have destiny. 
sometimes you just have to reconcile to whatever is destiny. But even within destiny, there is an am amount of free will to change the outcome of that destiny. You know, how badly you do with that, what has been already given to you, or how good you can probably transform them. So I think that is what I'm going, I'm going to discuss in the, the Nakshatra Pada's lesson. I mean, I think that's so beautiful because a lot of times I, I think people come to us and they're like confused about fate or free will. And when you study advanced Jyotish, you realize that they both coexist in a beautiful way. And you can actually use things like Nakshatra, Padas, and fixed dual and changeable Rashis to help determine the nature of the karma. So I, I'm really excited for your lecture, Dr. Pai. Yes. Thank you for taking the time to, to discuss and preview your lectures with me today. And I look forward to more discussions in the future. Yes, thank you, Sunati. Thank you very much. Hari